Welcome to Hope is Here, bringing hope to those struggling with life's difficult situations. Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are taking a look at running through the checklist. After we say amen and what do we do while we're waiting on God, based this off a wonderful book written about three years ago by Rusty George, uh, a pastor in Texas, uh, also used to be on staff at South and Christian Church, and uh, also based some of this just off my life of being a follower of Jesus for uh, over 40 years now and over 20 years in ministry. And we're looking at running through the checklist and uh you know, speaking of checklist, uh, does you know, anyone like to go to the beach besides me? Oh man, that that that's my 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 uh, secret place, my safe place, place I love to just kind of escape from the world and really love the Panhandle and the Panama City Beach, the Destin, the Fort Walton Beach area, Pensacola area. Um, just the sand's so white, the water's really clear and. Uh, just really, really helps kind of refuel my tank, my heart, my mind. And um, But, you know, uh, I, I used to be able to go once a year. Uh, I would save, and that would just be a, a priority for me and just really try to save, watch my money, and do extra things like weddings and things to try to help pr- provide for that. And it seemed like I'd always forget something. <laughs> <laughs> one trip, it'd be my sunglasses. And, uh, one time, actually, it's my bathing suit. You know, kind of hard to go to the beach uh, without that. Uh, sunscreen, got to have that. Uh, one time, even, I'm embarrassed to tell you, I, for, I left the address for the place I was going to in Florida. <laughs> uh, anybody feel me? I mean, my goodness. But, you know, there were a few years uh, that I didn't get to go. Not too long ago, a few years ago, uh, I didn't get to go for almost three years in a row. No vacation, period. Um, just financially just couldn't do it. It was in a season of life where things were really tough. And uh, you know what? When I finally got to go, it made me really appreciate it. But as I was preparing to go back, I was actually going to go to Fort Walton Beach this time after a three-year absence in Florida. Uh my mom called us check in, and uh, we were talking, and she said, well, uh, have you got you a list and a checklist? I said, no, nah, I don't know. I can do all that from memory. She said, well, son, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, seems like uh, last time you've gone, uh, you always said you forget one thing. So uh, you're a grown man, but I would encourage you to make a checklist. And as always, I uh, may not always want to hear what my mom has to say, but you know what? 99% of the time, she's right. <laughs> Uh, and I love my mom. I'm so thankful for her. And she's getting ready to celebrate her 80th birthday coming up in late November. And just uh, what an honor and what a blessing it is to have such an awesome mom. But you know what? I took her advice because she has a lot of wisdom. And I made a checklist. And guess what? I got down to Florida with everything. But you know, I think also a lot of us have a checklist with our prayer lives. Uh, you know, we sense that uh, God is not answering as quickly as we'd like, or when he's not giving us the answer that we would like, we kind of start to walk through a mental checklist of what we might need to do to get God's attention. Uh, do we you know, need to start going to church more? Uh, do we need to ask more people to pray? Uh, do you need to go to your pastor and say, hey, I need you to pray for me because I know you've got a direct line, right? <laughs> but I think, you know, we all have a few things that we think might help us flip the switch or make the connection work with God. And, yeah, we don't call them magic words, but we think that way, don't we? In fact, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you just think, maybe sometimes I'm overlooking something, God, and maybe that's why you're not answering my prayers. And, you know, we've been talking about many different things over the last few Mondays and Tuesdays, so what to do while we're waiting on God's answer. And, you know, the Bible does give us things that we can stop doing to help reestablish a connection with God. Maybe a, a checklist, okay? You might, you might call it a checklist. So while these things don't make God love you any less, they are spoken of in Scripture as being things that keep us from having our prayers answered. So while you wait, here are a few things that maybe you want to go through. Uh, Here are seven biblical reasons why God doesn't always answer our prayers as we request. And once again, I want to say this is an exhaustive list by any stretch, but it's just lessons that uh, 
through this book after Amen by Rusty George and in my own personal life that uh, I found is probably you know seven of the most common reasons based on, from the Bible on why maybe God doesn't answer our prayers sometimes. Number one, unconfessed sin. Number one, unconfessed sin. I really like this quote from the book After Amen by Pastor Rusty George. He says, Sin is more than just a mistake or an accident. It is when we willfully decide that our choice is better than God's command. It is when we are harboring a secret sin or practice that we know is outside God's intent, but we think if we just don't talk about it, it won't matter. Uh, it's so true, friends. Sometimes when we're d dealing with something in our life that we know uh, is outside of God's intent or it's a secret sin, but we think we just don't talk about it, 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 it won't matter. You know, like it's not there. It doesn't exist, right? <laughs> and uh, friends, yet I know that I know from over 50 years in life and being a follower of Jesus now over 40 years, it's just not true. And uh, Dwight L. Moody, one of the just most powerful uh, preachers, evangelists of all time, says, you know, there's no true prayer without confession. As long as we have unconfessed sin in our soul, we are not going to have power with God in prayer. God says if we regard iniquity in our hearts, he will not hear us, much less answer. As long as we are living in any known sin, we have no power in prayer, and God is not going to hear it. So here's a good way to know if you've got unconfessed sin in your life. Is there anything that you're currently doing that if others found out, you'd be embarrassed? Is there anything that you're trying to hide? Is there anything that kind of maybe makes you nervous that your spouse or your kids or your, your roommate, uh, your friends, uh, if they uh, they discovered it, that you would be like, oh, my goodness, I'd be embarrassed. Maybe is there anything currently that you're doing that is hurtful to others? Anything in your life that you're finding you have to justify or talk others into believing that, you know what, it's okay. Oh, we can be good about justifying things, right? Uh, especially things that are maybe in that gray area. It's not black or white where it's like blatant sin, but we really know deep down inside that it is. And we all have that friend that we can call that, you know, a lot of times uh, when we want to make ourselves feel better. So we'll call and kind of share our story and our thoughts, but we, we describe it and share it in a way that we, you know, we're hoping and kind of know that this person will agree with us because that they that's just the kind of friend that they are, and uh, it's good to have friends that encourage us and listen to us. But also the sign of being a good friend, uh, sometimes just being brutally honest, just saying, "Yeah, you know, I don't know if I quite believe that or I see that." And uh, I, you look at the Bible, Isaiah, uh, he he addresses this in regard to the people of God in Isaiah chapter fifty nine verses one and two. He says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that God will not hear. Powerful, friends. Powerful. In other words, the issue is not God's hearing or his power, but your and my sin. The issue of unconfessed sin is not about being perfect, but it's about being honest. I confess my lying. I'm coming clean on my prescription pills addiction. You're right. I'm selfish and self-consumed. You know, this relationship, it has gone too far and too long. So I want to ask you today, is there anything you need to confess? Because your unconfessed sin could be the reason that you sent silence from God today. And friends, obviously, one, just go straight to God himself. That's one of the great things of being a follower of Jesus, that we don't have to have a mediator, okay? That's the Old Testament and the law. Now we can go straight to God through Jesus. And I'd start there. But secondly, I found for me that sharing it with one other person, 
whether it's a close friend or a family member, or maybe it's uh, my pastor. Um, I guess in this case, with me being a pastor, more like a, a mentor. Uh, also, uh, could be maybe a, a counselor, a Christian counselor. So, but I'm just telling you, friends, you want to think about maybe a good way to lose some weight. Well, sometimes we can carry a 10, 15, 20 pound backpack uh, full of uh, rocks and just bricks and things, heavy stuff because of unconfessed sin in our life. And I uh, just want to encourage you with the revealing starts the healing. I'll say that one more time. With the revealing starts the healing. A second reason why God sometimes does not answer our prayers is when we have an unforgiving spirit. Second reason why God sometimes doesn't answer prayers is because we have an unforgiving spirit. It isn't easy to justify our lack of forgiveness towards other people and yet demand forgiveness from others? We call it being protective or just being honest. But most of the time, it's that we just don't want to forgive. Think about how you feel when you scroll through social media. Are there certain people that you see and inside you instinctively just cringe? Maybe you've already blocked them or unfollowed them, but most of the time we continue to cyberstalk them so we can see them face some difficulty in their life. And, you know, friends, I have to be honest with you that, you know, I mean, I think that as we look at things uh, at social media, uh, 99% of people, they just put the highlights of their life, friends. Nobody puts the bad, painful stuff, the embarrassing stuff, Occasionally, you'll see some people, and I think some people maybe live their lives too much on social media, okay? But that's between them and and Facebook, all right? But the fact of the matter is I have found that 99% of the people just put the positive things, the highlight reels of their life on social media. Uh, You know, I got to ask you, know, sometimes you just need to ask yourself this. When others talk about that person positively, how long does it take for you to say, yeah, but to begin in your mind and then to actually even exit your mouth? And I've shared this, I think, a few months ago, but that's one of the things God's really been growing me in and stretching me to just be a, a person of integrity and just a more mature person and Sometimes when I've heard things in the past about somebody and you know that's struggling, going through a difficult time, and maybe I have some piece of information just because of knowing uh, the situation, and I want to add it in. And I felt the Holy Spirit sometimes just prompt me to say, you know what, you don't need to say anything. Just keep your mouth shut. And I'm thankful that most of the time I do obey that. I truly do. Occasionally I get into my flesh and I'm just praying that that'll be a thing that I zero do uh, when the Holy Spirit prompts me saying, you don't need to add anything to this conversation. Just be a listener. Or if it's kind of maybe becoming uh, gossip in the name of a prayer request, uh, just to change the topic. And that's one of the things I've learned sometimes if it's an uncomfortable topic and uh, I feel like maybe there's some gossiping going on or it's not really totally sincere uh, I'm kind of getting a mixed signal in my spirit. I just, uh, as soon as they take a breath, I just change the subject. And it can be something as simple as, uh, hey, do you think Kentucky will win this Saturday? I mean, <laughs> there's lots of ways to do this. And uh, I just want to encourage you, you know, if there's anyone you're holding a grudge against, anyone you're hoping to experience a fall from grace, anyone you're crossing your fingers to see trip on their shoestring, shoestrings, And uh, let's be fair, you might even have a good reason sometime, but just know that it's not pleasing to God. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but join us again tomorrow as we'll continue looking at running through the checklist on Hope is Here. Thank you for listening to Hope is Here podcast. To listen to one of our previous programs or to make a tax-deductible donation, please go to our website, hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. If you have been blessed by Hope is Here, would you consider making a donation to help this ministry continue to reach thousands in Central Kentucky every day? It's simple and safe. Go to our website at hopeishere.today where you can make a safe and secure online donation or you can find our ad address to mail a check. All donations are tax deductible and they are greatly appreciated. Please make your donation today at hopeishere.today. Again, that's hopeishere.today.